Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. And before I even begin, uh, I just, I got to apologize because I recorded this incredible podcast with Sharice next. She's the Executive Director of Communications for Garland and ISD. Does an incredible job, just absolutely great uh, energy, spirit. It is a phenomenal podcast. I'm so proud of what we just recorded. What I'm not proud of is that I didn't set my audio correctly for the mic for the podcast. So um, it's not the quality that I'm used to. But I just want to give people a heads up on that. Because I, I know sometimes when people listen to podcasts, they, you know, maybe not like the audio and they get turned off. But I, I would hate that because Sharice is just incredible. And it was such a good podcast, just so many great ideas. And what we talked about was the importance of communication. Obviously, um, her role as the executive director of communications for Garland ISD, uh, you know, lends to that. But I actually didn't know that she was a teacher. She's a vice principal. She's a principal. And one of the things that really kind of stuck with me is how she used communications to not just share the incredible things that are happening in her schools, in her districts, but to elevate and make things better as well. And I think a lot of times we see those really great stories coming out of districts and they kind of seem to be in pockets. But what she's trying to do, and really the example she gives is how do, how do you make those go viral? I'm not just talking viral outside where the outside community hears about the great things happening in these school districts, but viral within your, within your own community where teachers can learn from each other because of the examples that are being shared and really telling those authentic stories. And so uh, it's, such a really, it's such a powerful podcast. I love the examples. Sharice and I just got along really, really well. And uh, I just wanted to record this and apologize uh, before we even started, very Canadian of me, I guess, but I know you're going to love it. Uh, uh, I know that it's not perfect and I always strive to give the best quality product, but uh, Sharice makes up for everything that I lost in my audio with her, her captivating stories and really interesting ideas. I know you're going to love it, but thanks for bearing with me uh, as I'm kind of getting back into the swings of uh, doing these podcasts. So I, I hope you love it. Welcome back. Another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Kroos. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I have the incredible Sharice Nix. Uh, if you follow, make sure you follow Sharice on Twitter because she has one of the most inspiring Twitter accounts and people just love her. I, it's honestly, I, you are so beloved on Twitter. It's amazing. But... Yeah. Not only are you beloved in Twitter, I, I had the opportunity to meet you recently uh, at an event, and it just seemed like you had a swarm of people around you all the time, right? And just people just, you know, just kind of clamored to you and stuff like that. So um, I met you, you made such a positive impression on me, and then we kind of got to talking and said, you have to be on my podcast. And uh, as we were talking, um, you know, a little bit about your, your you're the executive, executive director of communications for Garland ISD. And and shout out to Garland, because I've been there before. So give one of those, right? So hi, everyone in Garland. I, I had the opportunity to speak there a long, long time ago. Feel like everything feels like a long time ago after the last couple of years, to be honest with you. So every, I don't know if it feels like it could have been 10 or, you know, two years ago. But can you just tell us, you, you, you've been, in, you know, you, you've done everything in the profession. You're an amazing at your job right now. So tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do today, and how you got to that point. Um, hello, everyone. George, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. I'm excited to dialogue with you today, and hopefully we can help some people through our conversation. So um, I have been blessed to have an amazing um, career in education, and I'm so thankful for every opportunity. Um, I have a degree in communications and um, actually wanted to be Pam Oliver. I wanted to be a sports, like, a, you know, broadcaster. Um, so I went to school for communications and um, right before Hurricane Katrina hit, I, I went to school in New Orleans, I moved back home. And when I moved home, um, I didn't have a job. And so my mom, who was an educator, she says, uh, well, you're going to have to find a job that you should consider teaching because of my background of uh, being in church and um, leading Sunday school and things like that. And so I said, great. So I was a communications teacher for seventh and eighth grade. And so I had the opportunity to serve in that role for four years um, at a junior high level. 
And um, the second year of teaching, I knew that um, I had leadership uh, qualities and abilities and I wanted to um, kind of foster that. And so I, I went back to school and got my uh, administrative certificate. And so after four years of teaching in um, middle school, I became an elementary assistant principal. And I served in that role for four years. And then I did um, two years at um, the high school. And so I've had all level experience, middle, elementary, high school. And um, when I tell you the, that experience of being in the classroom, seeing what the teachers do to day to day, learning how to manage and lead, look at curriculum was invaluable. And so after serving um, those years as an assistant principal, six years, I then became an elementary principal. And so I became the principal of the proud Plummer Elementary in Cedar Hill, Texas. And so when I first acquired the school, um, I met with the teachers like the first day. And so I was like, what do you want me to know about Plummer? Like, what should I know about it? And so it was often repeated from the teachers that we're the best kept secret in Cedar Hill. People don't really know about us. The school's kind of tucked off. It was kind of like the school that was over there. Um, people weren't really at the bit to attend. Um, it was just kind of like just there. And so after meeting the teachers and hearing their passion and their love for the school, it was my sole mission that everything I wanted to do was to build, encourage, and uplift the teachers, the community, and the students at that school. And so my non-negotiable for being a principal was culture and climate and having an expectation of learning. Um, we had low test scores at the time. We had a high social economic uh, population. And so I came in strong. And to be honest with you, George, there were a lot of people. I was young at the time. I was, I think, 32 as a principal. And a lot of teachers there had literally been there like 30 years, like mm -hmm. for real. And so here I am. I'm new. I'm fresh. I'm young. I'm exciting. And I was kind of hit with resistance at first, like, why are we doing these things? Why, why is this important for us to celebrate and to engage and to take the time to have conversations and really get to know our kids and our families? Um, but it was a non-negotiable for me and I was relentless at it. And so everything that we did on the campus, I would tell the staff, we're creating experiences. Mm. It would create every time someone steps a foot on this campus, every time you have a conversation with the teacher, every time a kid walks in your door, you are creating an experience. And what experience are we going to create on this campus? Positive culture and climate was is was the standard. And so, for example, let me give you an example. Most times when it's like meet the teacher, you just go to the school, you get a slip of paper, you show them mm -hmm. who you're is and that's it no experiences and so we did it like every year we had a theme so like one year we did like it was a circus and so we we actually made like a ticket booth we had like red carpet we had a popcorn machine we had lady outside doing bubbles we hired a dj um you went to the ticket booth to get your ticket to find out who your teacher was and then the clowns took you down the hallway to to, to the room we decorated like we made people when they walked in that building feel like wow and when you do that you're setting that tone that number one they care enough about me to create an environment to make me feel welcome um and then yeah. you will see kids eyes light up we were in a low socioeconomic school my kids didn't have those experiences that the kids across town had so they may not have been able to go to the circus they might not have been able to go to a concert or to have different people come into the campus and so i didn't let that be an excuse I brought those experiences to my kids and to my family and to my community. And I'm so very proud of that. And so everything we did, so, for example, I, Deion Sanders came to our school to talk to our really? dad. Let me tell you, let me tell you this story. So we had all pro, so my, again, I was building culture and climate and I, I, I knew that there was a lack of fathers and dads in our schools and the presence of our students. So I wanted to, to cultivate that. I wanted to generate getting father figures, getting dads involved in the school. And so we had an all dad, all pro dads program. And so I'm like, oh, I really want to go big. I really want someone who's credible, who can speak to the dads. So this is when I first got on Twitter. I was not who I am now on Twitter. I was like, 
like nobody <laughs> and i'm still a nobody i'm like, dying are you you i'm like i'm dying you. right now let me i'm tell dying you. i know so it's coming I, i'm dying well let me tell you so i literally so dion at the time lived in cedar hill which is where yeah. our district is and so i knew he lived there and so i got on twitter and one day i tweeted <laughs> him and i was like hey dion I was like, I'm a principal in Cedar Hill. I need you to come to my school August, no, October. It's like October 29th for all pro dance day. Well, of course, I didn't hear anything. It's Deion Sanders, right? <laughs> so the next day I get on Twitter. Hey, Dion, I know that you saw my tweet yesterday. <laughs> you didn't say anything, but I need you to come October 29th for all pro dance day. George, I lied to you. <laughs> and Twitter's open, so you can go back and look years ago. I tweeted that man every day single day every day <laughs> every day for over a month i had kids get on there hey dad, I love it. Come, come talk to my dad about being a dad or what like i had teachers get on there every day i would wear like a jersey and be like what's up like <laughs> so um and, and so i never forget one day i was uh my my girlfriend my best friend she got married and i was in jackson mississippi over the weekend and so i was at her wedding reception and i pulled out my phone to tweet him because he didn't respond <laughs> for like the 45th day and i see that i had a message from him in my inbox and i was like oh my god oh my god then i got nervous because i was like he's probably gonna like <laughs> Hey, like cease and assist, like stop, right. to, like leave me alone, lady. Like, and so he um, he responded and he said, um, contact my agent at blah 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 blah. And so I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. He knows I, like he knows that I exist. And so that that uh, following week when we got back, so I called the um, I called the agent or whatever, and somehow he was on the phone or in the car with them. And so I was like. The first thing I was like, Dion, I don't have any money. I can't pay you. I know that you're worth everything. I said, but I need you to come to my campus. The kids deserve it. The dads need to hear from you. Like, please, like with everything in me, just come to our campus. Our, you know, our community needs you. He was like, girl, uh, it's October. You know, it's football season. I can't come. <laughs> you know, he's like, do you not know who I am? I'm like, yes, I know who you are. I'll change the date. Whatever date you want it to be it, done, I'll change it. Just come. And so we were literally on the phone, literally. And my secretary buzzed in and she was like, um, Mr. Stanley, is here? And I was like, shut up. Oh my God. And so he was happened to be in the neighborhood. So he rolled, he rolled up and he came to the school and he was there. And I was just in shock. <laughs> I was like, This is amazing. Deion Sanders is literally sitting here. So the power of social media, um, but it, I didn't even know I was gonna talk about that, but just just the experiences, how mm -hmm. it was so important to me. I was relentless about bringing my kids the best and, 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 and highlighting it and marketing. I went to Twitter. So we had a superintendent and he came years ago and he was like, you guys have to get on Twitter. And my first thought was, I'm not getting on Twitter. I already have Facebook, I already have Instagram, and I don't have time for another platform. <laughs> but I'm also that person, like, if you give me a challenge, I want to exceed it. So right. when he said that, you know, we have to get on Twitter. Cool. I'm all in. Let's go. So I, I um, got on Twitter. I told my teachers and they, of course, at first weren't receptive to it. So I said, hey, you have to tweet at least once a week. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not that hard. At least once a week. Show the great things that are happening in your classroom. You're doing the work anyway. You're engaging. You guys are phenomenal teachers when you're doing a small lesson or you're doing a, an, a presentation or the kids are engaged. Take a picture. Put it on social. And so I started promoting everything, every day, all the time, the great things that were happening on our campus. George, when I tell you, after four years of being at that campus, the com culture and climate had completely changed. We went from the lowest performing district uh, school in the district to having distinctions, to performing mm -hmm. at the highest level possible. We had the highest waiting list for students that want to enroll That's in our amazing. campus. I mean, we were like the campus. People wanted to go to Plummer. And so, you know, I'm just so thankful that social media was a, was a there so that the, that I could show what was happening. I could share that with our parents and our community. And I could highlight the great things that were happening um, on our campuses and how amazing the teachers were. And that we created a culture in a school where kids felt important. They felt valued. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, 
when you set the tone that when you walk in this building that you're loved and you're valued, think about what that does for your ability right. to learn. You take those barriers and those guards down where students feel like I can be vulnerable. I can right. say to the teacher that I don't understand. I know that my classmate isn't going to ridicule or bully me because we didn't tolerate that. Um, teachers felt free to think outside of the box and create lessons that, you know, not just textbook. Right. I told the teachers, I want you to go outside and hang from the tree, or I want to see you like, you know, down the hallway with chalk painting on the walls or whatever, because it just mattered. And so doing that work, there was a girl, she's um, in Mesquite right now. Her name is Sabrina Smith. And she was the comms girl at the time in Cedar Hill. And she mm -hmm. was like, Sharice, you ought to consider doing school PR. And I was like, huh? I didn't even really know that right. that existed um, because I was a principal and I thought I was going to go into like curriculum or, or HR or something that, like that. And so I was like, really, Sabrina? She said, yes, you just have this natural ability of connecting with people. You do a great job of marketing your school. Anytime we need to have an interview or we need to come to a campus, like you always you always provide and produce. And so I was like, hmm, well, maybe, you know? So she got me all gassed up and I applied for the position and guess what? I didn't get it. So I was like, well, she didn't know what she was talking about. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, well, let me stick to this. So after, um, after uh, four years of being a principal, I um, got the position of director of innovation. And so that um, job was about highlighting and promoting like the district um, and developing like different programs for the district um, innovative opportunities and ideas. And mm -hmm. so I was in that role maybe six months, if that. And I got a phone call and um, I had a friend. I had a big event. So I was planning an event called uh, Extravaganza, Cedar Hill Extravaganza. And the event was on Saturday. And so like when I'm in work mode, project mode, it's like, you know, I'm all in, I'm focused. And mm -hmm. so I had a friend called me like Monday and he said, Hey, Sharice, we need to go to lunch. I said, I'll have time to go to lunch. I have an event on Saturday. Like I'm locked in, like I'm not even eating this week. And so he was like, I really need to talk to you. I said, well, we'll talk later. So he called Wednesday, called Tuesday. I didn't answer. He called Wednesday. I didn't answer. He called Thursday. So I'm like, what's up? He says, I need to talk to you. And I was like, well, what? I, I can't I have an event. He said, um, you ought to consider applying for the chief of communications position in Lancaster ISD, which is a neighboring district. Mm -hmm. And I said, what? A chief? Like I hadn't been a coordinator or a director or an executive director, like chief? Chief is the highest level. And so he was like, yeah, you ought to apply. And he said, and the application closes tonight, which is why I've been trying to tell you to apply. I was like, it closes tonight? I was like, oh, how am I going to write? <laughs> like, oh my gosh. So I went home and I talked to my family about it. I prayed about it. I was like, whoa, okay. So that night uh, I went in there and I was trying to go as quickly as I could. I literally submitted that at a, like 11.58 and it closed at, at 12 midnight. Mm -hmm. So I submitted my application and um, that was on a Thursday. I interviewed on Monday, second interview on Thursday, and had the job on Friday. I was chief of communications for That's a awesome. ISD. <laughs> so I was like, I got the job now. What do I do? So <laughs> I, um, because I hadn't been in communications. I would have been even, in even though you kind of were the whole time, right? Like that's right. an amazing thing, right? You were doing amazing with that already. Yes. Yes. Um, correct. And so I I um, became the chief of communications in Lancaster ISD. And when I tell you that I was only in Lancaster a year and a half, and it felt like forever because I love shout out to mm -hmm. Lancaster. Uh, oh, we both oh. oh, if shout you say out. shout out, I got I got to hit the All button. Right. Shout out to Lancaster ISD, um, phenomenal district. Um, I we our team and we were able to go in there, George, and do things that had never been done before you talk about experiences to like a whole nother mm -hmm. level you know, i had the experience of doing it on campus so now it was like can i translate this work can i connect with a larger audience can i make the same impact at a, at a larger district so one example of just 
being innovative or crazy, maybe, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So when I went to the district, they, they didn't have a, a very strong active social media. And so knowing that that's where now people go for information, you know, like, like it or not, TMZ is like a credible news source. Apparently. Right, right. If it's not on TMZ, it didn't happen. So it's so powerful. And so when mm -hmm. we got there, you know, the district was still kind of antiquated in some of the marketing techniques, in my opinion, you know, like long, long, long newsletters, a lot of, a lot of text, a lot of read, reading and writing. And so I was like, we've got to update and we've got to become fresh. And so I said, we didn't have an Instagram at this time, at the time. And this was like three years ago. And so, um, I said, Instagram is where the kids are. We need to connect to the, with the kids. The kids are our audience. We need to find a way to, to hear from them, to get their value and their input. I want to celebrate and highlight the kids. It's about them. So they were like, well, we don't have an account. Cool. No problem. So one day I went to the high school. I took a big speaker and I had a playlist, a clean playlist of like current music that right. is like. I didn't even ask for permission. I went to the high school and I knew the principal, so I knew it would be okay. I went to the principal, so and I went, I went during to the lunch cafeteria. So I grabbed the microphone and I got the speaker and I just started playing music across the cafeteria. So all the kids are kind of looking around like, where is that coming from? So I kind of just let the music play for a little bit. And then I got on the mic and I was like, what's up, y'all? I was like, I'm Sharice. And I was like, I'm the new communications. And I said, we want to connect with you. We want to know you. We want to get, to, we want to hear your stories. We want to celebrate and highlight you. Get your phones out, get a, get them out. Come on, let me see, get them out and follow us on, on IG. We've got a new account. We want you guys to follow us. And so the kids are looking at us like side eye, like, mm, we don't know you. Who is <laughs> So again, persistency. I went every day for a week during mm -hmm. school lunches and I would sit with the kids and I had the, my team with me and I said, hey, get your phone out and follow us. Let's take a picture. Let, let me take a picture of y'all. Y'all want to say something on Twitter, on, on uh, IG? And so we developed like a very, very strong relationship with our kids just from showing them that we were invested in getting to know them and highlight them. So much so that like, like months later when i would come hmm. on the campus they would come up to me miss i scored this on my test can you put this on ig can you highlight me can you can you, can you can you um shout out give me a shout out and so it was so powerful that we were able to use that platform and that tool and engaging kids so that they felt welcomed and and um it was it was just amazing so being in Lancaster and having the opportunity to do things like that as far as student wise and then mm -hmm. doing things like convocations that had never been done before, um, having board appreciations that had never had like an, an event feel to it. Um, I mean, we did phenomenal work in uh, in the year and a half that I was there and I wasn't even there long um, before. Here, um, You're picked up by Garland. Here comes Garland. And so Lancaster, just to give viewers context, Lancaster um, has about 5,000 students, one high school mm -hmm. um, and 12 schools. And then here comes Garland. Garland ISD has 55,000 students. We have 72 schools. So you talk about going from like right, right. 5,000 to 55,000. So I was just like, here again, oh my gosh, can I do this? Like, can I, can I handle Garland? You know, like, I don't know. Um, so I'm here now in, in Garland, USA. I'm so thankful for the opportunity to be in this fantastic, fabulous district. I have learned and grown so much from being in a district that's completely different, different demographic, different area. Like I drive now like an hour, 20 minutes of work every day because it's just that far. Yeah. Um, but I absolutely love the work that I do. I absolutely love connecting with people, connecting with um, students and teachers and community, people from different states and countries. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I'm just happy to be in a, in, a, in a job that I truly feel is a passion for me. Um, it's it's I, it doesn't It doesn't seem like you're passionate. No, at all. I hate it. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem like you're very interested. No, I'm not that like, Whatever. Yeah, I'm like, I just go to work. 
So I basically just have like 18 pages of notes that I have written down of this stuff. So like, it's amazing. I have like so many questions that I have for you. Let's, right go. Now. Let's do it. Seriously, that was amazing. It's just incredible. So I got, so here's something we, I want you to just kind of to just maybe talk about a bit. So uh, I, I'm, I'm an educator, but I'm also a dad. I'm a, I'm a dad first. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you better believe I do not care about your school or district website. I have no interest. Somebody probably made it. It's just like fill in the blank. Like mm -hmm. someone tells you to do. I go on social media all the time and look up and I don't say anything. Mm -hmm. I, I like I and I'm talking like I'm not talk, like like and when I mean by that, like there's a lot of stuff that, you know, tells me about your school, your district, you know, yeah. when I'm looking at schools. And I don't think people necessarily know it because I think people are always paying it. I think that 99% of what's happening when you say something on Twitter is people not responding, but also deciding stuff. If that makes mm -hmm. sense, mm -hmm. like only a small percentage of people actually engage, but there's a huge percentage of people that are, you know, you know, making decisions about is my kid, like, is this a good place for my kid to go to school? Right. right? And I think that's something that people don't necessarily, are aware of because they are kind of focused on um, just the interactions that they get, right? Mm -hmm. So here's here's a question I have for you, and I'm like really curious about this. When you went to the one school, I feel like you you weren't necessarily at the beginning telling the story of the school. You were telling the story of the school that you wanted it to be to get it to that. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Like it was like, this is where, this is where we want to be. So I'm telling that. Right. And like, this, this is why I'm so fascinated by your work is because I've said this before is that sometimes the most innovative thing about a school district is their communications team. Their communications mm -hmm. team makes it look really, really good. But when you actually go into it, it's not as good. Like the communication department is top notch. But I think there's this kind of, there's this balance of like, hey, we got, we got to highlight these really amazing things so that we actually bring attention to it internally as well, right. not just externally. So like, how do you, how do you kind of balance that where you, where you have that? Cause like, you know, it's not just, it's not just education. There's people that, you know, in real estate, they, they talk like this big game. They talk about how much they care, go through the process. But then when you actually deal with a realtor, it's like, they, all they care about is money. They just see you as dollar signs. Right. right. And so it's kind of like, how do you find that balance of like, hey, this is we're not we're not necessarily at this point with the story that we're telling. Like it's there's elements of it there, but we're trying to get people to that space as well. Is that I don't know if that makes sense how I said because I think well, you have to tell it before it happens sometimes. Well, yes and no, because right. um I don't think that you're selling something that's not already there. It is there. Right. It's finding that it's there, right? Yeah. It's communicating. And I think that that's what's lost. And that's why I was so passionate. I was, when I went, I said, the teachers are working, they're great things that are happening, but nobody's talking about it. So if you don't talk about it and you don't bring light to it, then you leave someone's perception to become their reality. Right. I'm going to control the narrative. I'm going to make sure that I share with you. And I would tell all the time, like, I'm going to tell you my story. Mm -hmm. whatever it is. And so the teachers on my campus, although it wasn't on social media, it didn't mean that the work wasn't happening. Right. And so even in a district, you know, when you look at it from a, from a holistic perspective, the, you know, a lot of times comms people think that it's our job to be news, to, to distribute the news information of the district. Like, right. This is the lunch menu. This is the calendar and so forth. I have a different perspective. I say that we need to share the stories of the people in our district because that's when people can yeah, connect. Totally. That's when you can show those experiences. People, not to say they don't care about a lunch menu, but if you talk about how this kid has, you know, they they had leukemia and so they, they wanted to... Uh, to have a blood drive because they wanted to help other people. Those are the things that pull people in and draw people in. You know, if someone had cancer and uh, it's not just wear the color red because tomorrow's cancer day, it's 
this kid had a parent who suffered and, and died mm -hmm. and they want to bring awareness. So it's taking that information that's typically like news related or just standard information and finding the story behind it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so powerful. So I think that's the balance because I think there's greatness happening in all districts across the country. It's just finding the stories and how do you tell it and communicate it in a way that connects with others. Yeah, it's good. and I, I think like as I'm listening to you, one of the things that I've said is like, how do we make our stories go viral, right? Mm -hmm. And I think people when when they think about that idea of stories going viral, they're thinking about it outside of the district. So like all these people outside of the district, but I'm also thinking about insider schools, insider classrooms. So it's not like you're lying. No. That, hey, this is this is how you're not like, hey, I'm highlighting this, but I also want it to spread. Do you know what I mean? Like I want we want to see more of this, right? And and I think part of it too is like when you think about your role, it, it's it's really fascinating because I actually like when we were talking, I didn't know that you were actually taught were vice principal principal. I I just know you in your role today. But it's really fascinating how connected it is to really great teaching and learning. Because Absolutely. when you spread those stories, you actually make the teaching and learning better within your own school district, right? Like it's kind of fast, like as I'm listening to you, how yeah. pivotal that role can be to actually proving teaching and learning through not, not through bringing in experts and all these other things, it's through your own people. And I think that's what gets lost a lot is that we always look to the outside when actually it's highlighting the inside, which actually makes it really powerful. I love that you said that. So you know, typically districts have like a theme for the year, or, you mm -hmm. know, it's like this is our mantra or whatever. And so our team spent a lot of time deciding what is going to be the theme, you know, like we want it to be impactful. And so we decided on the GISD effect, mm -hmm. impacting lives and changing futures. And we say the interactions, the impact that you have on a student every day. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the system is the GISD effect, like you talked about, okay. George. It's, it's the teacher, it's the custodian, it's the receptionist, it's the bus driver, it's the cafeteria worker, it's the superintendent. Everybody has an impact on a child or a community or a parent. So what experience are you going to give them? Mm -hmm. But do know whether it's good or bad, you're going to have an impact. So let's make sure that we number one, recognize that we have this power and influence. And let's make sure that we give our community, our kids, the very best that we have, because everybody has the GISD effect in our district. And so, you know, like you said, it's it's not outside people. We're going to control and we're going to take ownership mm -hmm. of what we have to offer our community and all of our stakeholders. And, and like, there is a lot I can tell as a parent, as an educator within the first well, I'm going to, I don't know, I'm going to say meters. I'm yeah. going to go Canadian and say, use a metric system within the first 25 meters of walking into school, right? Absolutely. So I remember walking in with this, with a group of uh, staff. And as, as we walked in, mm -hmm. I, I actually said, no, 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 no. Yeah. And the reason I said that is because no smoking, no perfect or no like sense. Mm. Don't do this. Don't do that. No. So it's like, Hey, you can change the world, but do not bring food into the auditorium, right? So it's like, and there's a there's a gentleman. Uh, mm -hmm. His uh, his name was Doctor Martin Brokenly, and he said something really. I, I always remember this. It was really powerful. He said, "We've all seen the sign, and it says, um, for the safety of our kids, please check in the, at the office upon arrival.' So like mm -hmm. you've seen that in schools, right? Mm -hmm. So he said the first thing you're insinuating to people as they enter your building is kids are not safe. That's the first thing you're telling. So he said, why not? I, he said, I understand why you want people to check in when they arrive. So why not actually say, um, upon arrival, we love to welcome all visitors. Please come say hi at the office. Mm -hmm. And so like, you're actually getting the same, mm -hmm. you're, you're getting the same thing happening. Yeah. Uh, right. But it's just a totally different way to think about this. Right. And so like, when I have a conversation with the office staff, when I have, like, I'm making, you know, I'm making judgments. Right. And I, when people say, don't judge. We all judge. All mm -hmm. of us judge all the time. And mm -hmm. the reality of it is, is that you, you mean don't judge me negatively, right? So like if mm -hmm. I judge, like I'm, I'm judging you this whole time, I'm like, she's awesome. So that, that's, that's a good judgment, right? I'm judging you. And I know everyone else is like, oh, she's awesome. This is someone who I'd love to work with. 
So we're all making judgments, and I think we just want to make the positive judgments too. Um, here's here's something I, want. I, I, I there is like I, I could I'm like terrified that I'm going to talk to you for like 18 hours because I <laughs> promise because I got like a million questions here. So one of the things that I'd love to hear your thoughts on, I hate the term data driven. And the reason I hate the term data driven is because a lot of times the school story is like, we have good scores. Like that, that's the story, right? And then you're really talking about this human aspect. So I've always talked about moving from the notion of learner driven to learner driven evidence and form and not using the terminology data driven. And it's like really kind of what you say is like the interactions, that effect that we have on people. Right. And understanding who are we actually here to serve. But then I use the term evidence because, yeah, it can be tests, it can be scores, but it's also like like our concerts that we have that show incredible learning, but are very hard to like measure. Right. But tell a very powerful story. So how do you like how do you in your roles in Lancaster, currently in Garland, you know, as a principal, vice principal, go past telling the story of your school? to or your schools or and your district past the here's our score right because i think that's a, that that's like a a huge question that so many people have because you'll have that first day uh superintendent say like we value relationships and you know all this other stuff now let's look at the data and here's where it sucks and we got to improve this and then it's just like then people start teaching to the test because that's what is the focus all the time and i think that a lot of times we we don't want our communities focused solely on test scores but then we focus them on test scores mm -hmm. do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? so mm -hmm. how do you how do you how do you and i'm not saying get rid of that i'm saying like how do you actually bring in mo a more holistic uh, i think you, you said that earlier um way of actually telling the story of our schools um you know george which i go back and i said this before i even knew that you were going to ask me this question um it was I was adamant about my teachers showing the work that they were doing, mm -hmm. because when you can show a parent their kid engaged in learning in a project or a presentation or a demonstration of learning mm -hmm. and the parent seeing their kid having experiences that speaks so much louder than saying you got an 89 or 90 or whatever on a project and you're in this quartile or percentage people like you say feel connected when you can show them what's happening and so i think as educators you know it is a hard balance because you know i have both lens i'm now in administration so i understand the importance and the the expectations of, of state and federal guidelines and expectations mm -hmm. and that vocabulary that you have to learn yeah. and, and are accountable to because it, it, it's there's accountability you can't get past that but i think the focus goes away from like you said speaking about the data specifically to showing that data in action yeah you know it, you know yeah. like like if we know for example as a as a as an educator, if you know that you need to school, like there's a TEAK, TEAK are the standards that you have to teach. It might be, let's say, problem solving might be that particular TEAK. And so instead of saying that, you know, our data reflects that our students are performing low at, at um, problem solving, show a kid engaged in an activity or a lesson that involves problem solving show those deeper connections but there again it starts with the culture and the climate of the building if you don't have a leader that's not willing to allow you the opportunity to explore learning in a different way instead of looking at test taking test looking at you know questions on a page but really challenging the students to think through an activity or an exercise then you're missing it and i think a lot of teachers feel that they're held to the standard of i've got to perform you know I've, we're going to be graded I've, i'm it's held to my evaluation I've, I've got to perform and if they don't have a leader that understands and cultivates the understanding that it's more than that then it's it's a really difficult situation for them to be in so i i always you know use my voice you know um when, when i'm in meetings to demonstrate to say hey We've got to remember to show what's happening in the classrooms every day and not focus just solely on scores because data is cold. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel relatable. It doesn't feel like that, like the, that it cares. But when you take the time to give my kid a new experience, then that shows otherwise. It is a difficult balance though. It, and it, and like I always say, like I always say this when I'm working with groups is that I'm not saying don't worry about tests. 
because mm-hmm. it, it's not, I'm not a big fan of tests, but I, but it's, I'm like, I don't want to say, don't worry about tests because that's a super easy thing to say for me yeah. who doesn't have to worry about it. Right. So I'm like saying like, how, how do we actually, as you kind of said, find this balance? Um, I'm going to ask you this. I'm, I'm actually ask you to, here's, I'm going to ask you this question. If you could make, I always think about, like, I always write down notes. What would you name? What would you name this podcast? Like, what would be the title of this podcast? Not like, not my podcast, but this episode with you. What would you call it? I'm curious. Like, what? What's the theme that keeps emerging over and over again? I know uh, this is like put you on the spot. I know. I was so ready. For it that. is. Um. I got. So- I got. I got one, but I'm waiting to see what you say. I don't think mine's that great, but what I always tell people always is control your narrative, tell your own story. And I think that that is so powerful. And I, and I, I, everywhere I go, I tell people, you know, if you think that you're going to, if you think that sitting back in the back of the room quietly is going to have an impact and make a difference, you're wrong. You have a story to tell. There's greatness on the inside of you in your district, in, in, on your campuses, whoever find it, tell it. Because if you don't tell your story, then somebody else will. And let me tell you something. People are going to talk about you anyway. So why not give them something to talk about? Right. I love it. I love it. So I, the, I, it's very, I was going to say, what's the story you want to tell? Yeah. That's, that's what I keep hearing from you. Okay. I got I to gotta ask you this. This is like a little, this is a little personal for me. So I get, I get blasted for this quote. Okay. And people don't listen to the, they, they don't listen to the story of the context. And so there's a whole story connected. And I, I'm known for saying this, that we need to make the positive so loud that the negatives are almost impossible here. So people right. are like, toxic positivity, uh, you're not addressing negative stuff. And I'm like, no, I'm not actually saying that. What I'm actually saying is like, hey, there are issues, but I'm finding solutions so that we move forward to actually help kids. Because like I can dwell on issues forever, but if I don't actually find solutions, it doesn't help yeah. kids. So like when I hear your story, so like, when you when you hear the context around that um it seems like that's really it's not like i i guarantee you like you even talked about some of the stuff that you you dealt with you know in your school some of the things that you wanted to overturn but you actually were very solution focused Mm -hmm. which is kind of but you always are highlighting those things so i'm just curious your thoughts on that quote i'm I'm curious i I love it so to all those haters out there you got to (laughs) fall back um I I lead with love and positivity. And some people may see that to be superficial or some people right. might say that there's no surface or there's no depth, but they're wrong. Once you create that environment to be positive and, and love, th- here again, that's when you open the possibilities for true learning and conversations to take place without judgment, without fear, without bias. And so setting that tone is a non-negotiable. And I, I I believe in positivity too, George. I mean, if you follow me on, on Twitter, that's what you're going to see. I mean, you have rough days and you have moments, have your moment and mm-hmm. move on. So, so I'm going to like, I'm just going to double down on what you just said. So when we first talked and you said, I, I did this, 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 I'm like, excuse me, like, how have you done all of these things already? Mm-hmm. And so like a lot of times, and I don't want to be, I don't want to, I'm not going to say your age because that's not my place to say, it. I know it. Right. Mm-hmm. But you, you have done a lot of things at a young age. And I just, I assumed you just like, but you're, but you're telling these stories, like just like, just focused work, like the Dion Sanders story. Like I, I, I actually appreciate that story a million times more. Cause I thought you're going to say, I tweeted Dion Sanders and he tweeted back to me, but it's way better because you incessantly tweeted Deion Sanders day after day after day. And so, yeah, maybe you could have been discouraged, but you kept, I'm going to, I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to keep making this happen. And so I, I love that. I feel everyone just got like the best webinar that on, on, I, I, this is actually really kind of shifted a lot of my thinking on communications Mm -hmm. as it not being a separate, um, from, pedagogy and what we teach but actually as a leverage right like a, a lifting point so it, it was i'm blown away this is absolutely amazing well i'm so i'm so glad that um you were able to connect and um there's it's it's powerful and um i think people need to understand uh the power of, of social media and connecting with others um 
it's changing. And I, and to be honest, you know, I had to deal with that even in my current department. When mm -hmm. I first got to Garland, it was, um, it's a great district. Um, but you know, oftentimes tradition is frozen success. Mm -hmm. And you know, you've Ooh, gotta, that was good. You've that gotta, was good. I love gotta, that quote. Yeah. Tradition is frozen success. And so I, I was nervous coming to Garland because I'm an out of the box girl. Like I want to do things that have never been done before. I mean, and I'm a person that wants to ask for forgiveness instead of permission. And, you know, that's not necessarily <laughs> always you know, the way that right. you should do it, but I'm passionate about the work. I'm passionate about sharing the stories and the great things that are happening. I'm passionate about highlighting the teachers in, in our district. And um, so I'm going to, I'm going to, get to that line and so i remember when i got to my district and um you know it was very phenomenal phenomenal department um but just wanted to kind of take it to the next level and and wanted to challenge and change some of the thoughts and, and practices and um so it was kind of like well you know this is what we do you know mm -hmm. this, this is what we do and i was like well why do we have to do it that way you know, like, well, right. who says that we, it has to continue that way. And so I remember getting a little frustrated because I'm new to this organization. I'm new to, the, I don't have, I was in Cedar Hill for 12 years. I had taught mm -hmm. at all levels and at the district. I knew families, I knew parents, I knew community. Mm -hmm. I knew that. I don't know anybody didn't in Garland. You know, I was brand new. Mm -hmm. I didn't. And so I was kind of like, well, do I fall back and kind of go with the status quo and what's has already been done and just kind of just just fill the role but that's not who i am mm -hmm. and so i remember calling my superintendent one day and i said dr lopez i said you know i understand that this is where we are as a department and a district and and it's been successful and i appreciate that and i, I love where we where we are in a district but this is where i see it going like i have a vision for mm -hmm. for where, where we can be and i said and do you want me to be who I am, boss? Or do you want me to follow and just stick with the status quo? I'm going to be compliant and, and do whatever you want me to do. But I said, I'm ha I need to be me. Right. And I said, so tell me, tell me. And he says, I want, I hired you to be you. I hired you because you're, you know, it's, it, you're different and you're going to push and you want to help grow and tell the, you know, and share our story. And so I'm so thankful to have a leader who didn't suppress um, the vision mm -hmm. that I have inside of me. I'm so thankful for Dr. Lopez and Dr. Russell for saying, go do you. And if you fail, fail forward. Mm -hmm. It's okay. And so I, I'm appreciative to be in an environment where um, they say, let's take some risk. And, and we see it being successful. Well, here's, 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 I got to tell you this. I, I was lucky enough to meet you first in person and then yeah. follow you on social media. And you made a very quick impression on me. And, and Nolly, Nolly, and it's kind of funny because it wasn't just the interaction that we had, but the interactions I saw you having with others. Mm -hmm. so I'm watching stuff all the time. And so I was very impressed with you. Now, your social media, you're a very positive person and you you are just I feel like you're lifting people up. And one of the things I really love about this conversation is sometimes we see people on social media and then we're kind of like disappointed when we talk to them in person. Oh, yeah. oh, no. And you're the you're and it's like I'm like, how can you even be better in person? Aww. And and you're just absolutely incredible. So I know people are gonna get so much out of this conversation. I like I have a billion like I have, I think there's gotta be a part two. So oh, I, I love it. But hey, everyone, thanks so much for listening. Everyone, make sure you follow Sharice uh, at Sharice underscore Nix on Twitter. And uh, and just for more inspiration, she's absolutely incredible. So thanks so much for listening, Sharice. Thanks so much for taking the time out of your day. Really Hi, everybody. It. Thank you so much. I look forward to connecting with you guys. So follow me, I'll follow back. And I'm, I'm excited to learn from you. All right, take care, everybody.